Hey, what is up guys? It's your voice feed here and today we're going to be talking about six of the most broken heroes in Dota. I'm going to be going first over three heroes that are particularly broken in your average matchmaking matches and then three heroes that are extremely broken in the pro scene. These are six different heroes in total and let's get into it. All right, starting off with pubs. So this is anywhere from zero MMR all the way to 10,000 MMR. I'm just talking about general ranked matchmaking. Let's start off talking about Razor. Razor is currently one of the most dominant heroes in pubs. The win rate shows that at the hero has over a 54% win rate and doesn't seem to be slowing down. Honestly, the hero didn't even get buffed hard last patch and yet it doesn't seem to matter. Ever since people have realized that Spell Lifesteal on Razor is extremely good when paired with his shard, that Proxen does damage every time an ability, item, or an auto attack, 18% of the time, is cast on Razor, he Proxen does damage to three units around him. So basically, you buy a Bloodstone, you buy a Pipe, some people like going Blade Mail, Halberd's a nice item, sometimes people go Kaya Sanj to synergize with the spell I steal at the Bloodstone. Essentially, you become very tanky. The enemy overcommits on you. They're like, oh, we can kill this guy. It's Razor. He typically dies pretty fast. All of a sudden, the Bloodstone goes off, the Shard goes to work, and everyone dies. I've even heard, because I coach a lot of 2-3k to MMR players, that's probably my average coaching range, Apparently, Razor is banned, like, every single game. <laughs> and, like, it, like, if this hero is not banned, it gets picked. And I guess I understand why. It's definitely the most dominant pub hero in Dota right now. Getting into the second hero, we have Lycan. Now, I know that might sound a little bit weird, but the hero's win rate is not only high in very high MMR pubs, it's also just high in every bracket. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hmm, is that because... The hero is picked by a very small amount of players who specialize in the hero, and while I do think that is somewhat the case, I don't think it's the main reason. I think the main reason for Lycan's current dominance, and I would definitely recommend you learn the hero, if you're interested in getting into a uni hero, I actually don't think Lycan's very hard at all. It might seem daunting at first, but honestly, out of all the uni heroes, he's one of the easiest, maybe even the easiest out of all of them, because you can just select all at the same time and go in. But why is Lycan good right now? I think the main reason is the power of Helm of the Dominator too. This item's in a great spot and there's multiple ancient camps that are extremely powerful. In particular, the Black Dragon allows you to flash harm like crazy, and the Thunderhide giving 75 attack speed for 8 seconds on an 8 second cooldown is absolutely incredible. On top of that, I think Lycan in general has this real X factor in Howl. Ever since they made it where Howl is global, affecting every creep in the game, and every hero, regardless of vision, by Howl is insane. If you don't know what Lycan's Howl does, it reduces armor and it reduces attack damage. Meaning every single time you cast Howl, every creep wave shoves in, giving you absurd map control and making everyone on the enemy team farm much slower. It's straight up bizarre how it works, but it's very powerful and it makes Lycan very strong in your average pub. Last thing I want to say about Lycan as well, this hero's main weakness, in my opinion, is his early laning stage. Pretty punishable hero, he has bad armor, and it's pretty hard to last it early on if you get contested. That's the key word though, if you don't get contested and you get free farm as Lycan in the early levels, he will be stronger than practically 95% of heroes at minute 15. Hands down. And finally, the last pub hero we have is Ricky Maru. Ricky! <laughs> so, support Orkor. I actually think he's just as good in either of the roles in your average pub. I think the higher you get, the less I would recommend Ricky as a safe lane hero. It can't jungle and doesn't recover well after a bad lane. However, if you can get through the lane, which the hero has good sustain and does fine, if not pressured properly, because it has good armor and good, good base regen, then the hero is going to do great. It scales well with the Diffusal into Ags build. I've made a video about that, so if you want to go check it out and see why the Ags is really good for farming on Ricky, I recommend you do it. The short gist is basically it allows you to clear creep ways with one tricks of the trade. And the early Diffusal timing with the singular magic wand and shreds is just better than any other carry at fighting. Like, a lot of skirmishing happens in your average Dota pub. People love fighting. And Ricky is just one of those carries that's going to show up to the fight, wants to show up to the fight, and is going to be able to get multiple kills per fight. And that's going to make the mentality of your team better. It's going to make people a lot less toxic because the amount of safe lane players I have to coach who get flamed by their teammates for farming blows my mind. Like, what do you want them to do? 
show up with Echo Saber and no God Strength on Sven? All right, getting into the pro scene heroes, we're gonna start off with Lina. Lina is currently like a 64% win rate hero in the DPC across all regions. And she's first picked, literally first picked. With no information, people pick Lina and put it safe lane most of the time, sometimes mid, but primarily safe lane and it wins most of the time. I don't know what to pick in Alina. Honestly, like, I'm not even sure. I still don't know. I've played against this hero a ton. I still don't, I honestly don't even know what I like playing in Alina because a lot of the jump heroes that feel good against Alina mid game don't do good against her in lane. And then if you fall too far behind, all of a sudden it's 16 minutes in, she shows up to the team fight with a Gleitnir and you're like, what? How does she have a Gleitnir BKB at minute 20? Like this hero just wipes through the map. It's a dominant laner. It scales well. It's a good laner, good mid game, good Rocher, good at sieging due to her good range. You can go with Dragonlance as well. Can itemize Hurricane Pike in certain matchups, can rush BKB in certain matchups, can go boots of travel if needed. This hero literally does it all. I can't believe it took people this long to figure out Lena Carey was good. There's some guy, there's some meme. There's some guy who's been doing this for a long time. I've played against him multiple times who's been doing Lena Carey for a long time, he was onto something, because it really is so well-rounded, and definitely something I would recommend in average pubs as well, if the hero was a bit easier, you just gotta learn how to play it. The second hero is Tree and Protector. This hero seems particularly good in team comps where either the enemy team has a lot of physical damage, or if you have cores that really have bad armor and want to run in. Heroes such as Leshrac and Death Prophet, two heroes that are very popular right now, very much benefit from living armor, giving them 12 armor very early on into the game. It's a crazy number. It more than doubles a lot of heroes' armor early on into the match. I also think Treant is just kind of a well-rounded hero. They buffed it recently, making Leech Seed and Overgrowth better, but I don't even think that's the main selling point. I think Living Armor has been better than people knew for a while now. The big thing is that there's a lot of unit heroes going around, especially at the high level, a lot of unit heroes, even something like Death Prophet, Exorcism is uh, physical damage. And having Living Armor against these heroes is a game changer. It makes sure your towers don't instantly die. And the great thing about Train Protector is you don't have to pick them into high physical damage team comps. If the enemy goes in magical damage team comp, that might seem like the end of the world, but the reality is it's not. In fact, sometimes it's better. The reason why is these magical damage team comps against Train Protector can practically never take a tier one tower. At least Beastmaster, while he doesn't like living armor because of the armor it gives to the people he's going on and he does mostly physical damage, at least he can kill the buildings through living armor. Like, at least he's got that. But these magic damage heroes like Mars and Darkseer, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, they can kill people through living armor due to their high magic damage, but they certainly cannot take the tower. <laughs> and it becomes a huge struggle for any team to draft against a train protector because too much physical damage means that you can't kill people through living armor. Too little physical damage means you're never taking any buildings. So there's this really fine balance teams have to work around, and that's really a big reason why I like Treant and a lot of pro teams do too. And then finally, for the most boring hero on this list, we have Broodmother. <laughs> it just buys the aura items. Guardian Greaves are very good right now. Pipes are very good right now. It has like practically no lane losing matchups. It forces you to play a very certain style of Dota. It forces you to draft very specific Dota heroes. Basically, it's very unfun to play against Broodmother. It makes you play in a very certain way. Even if you play that way, it's just gonna show up to the team fight, healer team, piper team, and then farm all of the jungle and then give vision of you no matter where you are, and then take Roshan. It just, it kind of does everything. I even played a Broodmother game recently where I went right click. So at level 20, she has a 25 agi talent. And then at level 25, she is 0.3 seconds off her base attack time when using her shard. I'm sorry, her first ability, Insatiable Hunger. Her attack speed goes through the roof. You are an alchemist. The reason why alchemist's attack speed goes up so much during Chemical Rage is because it lowers his base attack time. I think by 0.3, if I'm not mistaken. Broodmother gets that as a talent. So even if her spiders are completely countered, you can scale as a right clicker. I actually went Daedalus and right click people to death. I think I three shot a tree end, considering the shard also buffs your insatiable hunger. But nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this more condensed video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.